hey, I recently programmed something that was pretty fun for this update, and that is called collision detection. Some people call it obstacle detection or object collision, but I think I'll mostly go with collision detection in this video and future videos. But anyway, there's three different types of collisions that are now detected. One is with the edge of the world. So if I try to walk forward or strafe left or right and try to leave the world, I can no longer do that. The second is collision with other cubes that are in the world. So if I try to walk straight into this cube, notice how I get sidestepped or pushed to the side. I can no longer walk through cubes. And the third and final collision that's detected is collision with other mannequins. So notice how as I try to walk forward right into the other guy, it, it pretty much stops me in my tracks. I can no longer go through other mannequins either. So this worked out really well. This is something I'm particularly proud of. And notice, by the way, that if I just hit forward, it doesn't stop moving completely. It only cancels out the vector that would be invalid. So if you imagine that there's an x and y vector as I go forward, um, only the, the y gets canceled out, so it doesn't let me go forward in the y direction, but it still keeps the x vector, so it lets me go uh, proceed in the x direction that it would have let me go in anyway had, had I not reached the end of the world. Um, same thing with running into the cube. So if I run into the cube at an angle here and I keep walking forward, it'll push me to the side and around the cube. So that's pretty much the update, actually. Definitely uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this. As the world gets bigger and as we add more mannequins and cubes, uh, it'll be a lot of fun to see what sort of structures and, and walls and rooms we can create. So that'll force people to enter and leave rooms through doors and, and that sort of deal. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. Um, please leave a like if this is interesting to you. I'll now get into the JavaScript. So if you're not interested in the JavaScript to program collision detection, you don't have to watch the rest of the video, but I'll now get into the JavaScript and quickly go over um, how this was programmed. So let me, uh, let's see, right click here, inspect element. And if you're a JavaScript de uh, developer or, or anyone who's just curious to learn JavaScript, feel free to do this on your end too. Just go to hcj3d.com. This will load. You can right click, inspect element. I'm going to go to the sources here and look at our main JavaScript page. And so there's three or there's four different movements moving forward, backward, left, and right. I'll just be concerned with moving forward for, for this for now because the other three movements are basically the same. So move forward. Where do I move forward? So here's move forward. And basically if it detects the W key being pressed for move forward. So that's key number 87. So whenever key 87 is being pressed, notice down here in the bottom left hand corner it detects that W is being pressed and the move forward function is being called. So the move forward function basically does this. It calculates the new X and Y coordinate for moving forward. It determines whether the new x is valid and whether the new y is valid. If it's not valid, it reverts the coordinate back to its original value. And it does this individually for x and for y. So this way it doesn't cancel out the movement completely. It still keeps the x or y if it's valid, but it will only um, cancel out the x or the y individually if each one individually is invalid, but it won't cancel both out necessarily. And then, and then it simply assigns the new x and y to variables and updates the mannequin that way. So the interesting question is, how do we determine whether the new x is valid or not? Well, we use these methods here that are part of this mute, uh, move service that I wrote. And the methods are called is new x valid and is new y valid. So let me go into that service and take a look at the logic there. Oops, we want the mannequin move service. Okay, here we go. Here we have two methods. Is new x valid? Is new y valid? They're base, the code is almost the same. There is code repeat here. It's just that is new x valid tests on the x coordinate. Is new y valid te uh, tests on the y. So. Um, you could copy and paste the code and just replace x with y and so on. So there is code repeat. That will have to be addressed in a, in a later update to get rid of that code 
uh, repeat if necessary. But anyway, we'll just take a look at this new X. Is new X valid? Is new X valid asks three questions because we're worried about three different types of collisions right now. First, it asks, does the new X fall off of the ground? In other words, does it reach a coordinate that's basically at the edge of the world? Second, does new X run into a cube? In other words, is the new X that's being proposed going to put us inside one of these cubes? And similarly, does new X run into a mannequin? And that's basically the same behavior where it won't let us run into a mannequin. So that's the logic. And if any of these conditions, these three questions, turns out to be the case, then we will return false. So if we're about to fall off the ground, then return false. If we're going to run into a cube or into a mannequin, then return false. If none of these conditions are about to occur, then we will return true. And it's the same exact thing for the Y coordinate. So we're asking the same exact three questions and we're returning false if any of them happen to be true. And uh, if none of these conditions are happening, then we return true to let the calling functions know that the new Y is valid. So that's pretty much how the JavaScript works. If you're a developer, again, you can get into this, um, the code a little more, uh, a little more in depth. It's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, we're looping through all the cubes on the map, looping through all the mannequins on the map. I was a little bit concerned about the performance, but it turns out that with uh, modern day CPUs, it's able to loop through these arrays pretty quickly. This array of cube entities only has 10 cubes and mannequin entities uh, only has 10 mannequins as well. If we start dealing with thousands, tens of thousands of mannequins or cubes, then things can get a little dicey there. Uh, so we'll have to address that at a later point. But for now, that logic works just fine. So that is how the JavaScript is implemented. Again, I thought this turned out really well. It only took a couple days to program, but uh, it was still really interesting to see the results of this. Um, if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to comment on this video. Let me know what questions you have, either about the front end or the back end JavaScript. But I uh, just wanted to upload this video just showing that there is now object collision. I think next I'll start making the world a little bit bigger and adding more cubes and mannequins. I'll try to make this world multiplayer so that we can start saving our states and and collecting pickup items and maybe even chatting with each other and, and that sort of thing. But uh, for now, we have object collision.